Welcome to Candid Conversation. I am back at with a time change at uh, filming this in the dark, <laughs> but it'll get light after a while. Anyway, uh, today's question: Why did God allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve? And uh, go ahead and have the. I mean, God in His foreknowledge would know that they would fall, that they would sin, and it seems that the whole world has been under the curse of sin for 6,000 years. So why did God allow this to happen? And it's really the same reason that you allow your kid uh, to skin his knee, to uh, learn how to make friends. Uh, it's, it's because God didn't just make Adam and Eve to just sit around in paradise and do nothing. God had a purpose for making Adam and Eve and that are mankind as a whole and that was to bring glory to himself through God's love coming through them um, ultimately when God made mankind he gave man dominion over his creation Genesis 126 27 tells us and the reason he did that is because he had in his mind basically the reason he made man is so that uh, Jesus Christ as the perfect man would rule over everything he is called in Colossians 1 the firstborn of every creature that uh, God the Son existed in eternity past but that God decided he would make man and uh, have man rule over the entire world with that man being Christ Jesus but and the, the way the reason that God made all those things is so that he could share his love through this new creature called man and in in Christ and so uh, his the idea again is not just to sit around and do nothing but it's uh, to share God's love you know, if, if all I do is sit at home and do nothing well I'm not leading anybody to Christ I'm not lead anybody to come into the knowledge of the truth. I'm not doing that myself. Uh, I'm not uh, bringing glory to God because all I'm doing is just doing nothing and doing whatever I want to do and not bringing any value to society as a whole. The value comes when I go to my job and work and uh, contribute to society. And that's what God wanted man to do for all eternity. But the currency of heaven er, in God's kingdom isn't dollar bills. It's not, you know, get the gross domestic product to a certain level. It is to bring glory to God. And the way glory uh, comes to God is through His love coming through us. And so, in love, 1 Corinthians 13 says that, uh, you know, verses 4 through 8, it talks about all the characteristics of love there. It's patient, it's kind, doesn't envy, doesn't boast. <laughs> It's not proud, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking. <coughs> it's not easily angered. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <laughs> all these characteristics of love then shows that God couldn't force that upon man. You know, God could have made man to where uh, he was like a robot. He would never sin. Uh, he would never... He would just do whatever God wants him to do. And if God didn't give us the free will, then God's love wouldn't come through us. I think of, uh, you know, uh, my dishwasher, for example. My dishwasher um, washes the dishes. So it does a good job, usually. <laughs> uh, to the extent that that dishwasher has been programmed correctly by man, it does a good job. But there's no love coming through the dishwasher. It's just, it does a task. It's all it does. If God made us as a robot with no free will, then we would just do a task. That's all we would do. And there would be no love coming through us to others. So God made us to, and what we do in life a lot of times is a copy of what we do in heaven. And like I said, God doesn't just expect us to sit around and do nothing. When you're a kid, you're learning a bunch of stuff. When you're an adult, you're out there doing those things. And then you get to retire, and it, and it maybe you get to the point when you retire when you don't do much, 
well, the main reason for that is because you're just not physically capable of doing a lot like you could when you were younger. And all of that has to do with the curse of sin. So, um, you know, you may think, well, heaven isn't going to be that great if I do all these things on the earth. See, what we do is we think of the earth and what we do is because we're under the curse of sin, we don't like it. You know, even if you like your job, you probably don't like the people you work with, or if you like them, you don't you don't like circumstances that come out, you don't like the customers, or you know, there's something whenever you come to people interacting with each other under the curse of sin, there's always problems. And and so there are things that we just don't like about life because we're under that curse of sin, and so then the result is that um, we think, oh, I can't wait till I retire, and then I do nothing. And so then we usually we think of heaven as like that. It's like, oh yeah, I'll rest from all my labor. There's no death, sorrow, crying, pain, all the former things that passed away. So I'm just going to be sitting on a cloud, eating grapes, playing a harp, just having, you know, doing whatever I want to do, and uh, just like I'm retired, and I'll just do that for all eternity. But no, God made you to do things just like you do on the earth. Uh, God made a body that was in the image of God. He made an earth that was a pattern of things that you would be doing. Uh, he made all these things to show you what you'd be doing in eternity. But of course the big thing is you don't sin. And when the curse of sin and all that's gone, well then there is no problems. And it's not like you you have you don't wake up in the morning with aches and pains. You don't have to retire after working for 40 some years. You can, uh, everything you do is enjoyable because it's Christ living in you. What makes everything enjoyable is the love of God coming through you, Christ living in you, bringing God glory. You know, a lot of people like get satisfaction out of a career that they do because they feel like they've accomplished something. They're bringing glory to maybe their family, to themselves, to their company that they're with, and, uh, and they do, and so they enjoy the job, maybe there are aspects of it they don't like, but they enjoy doing it because they're at least being productive. They feel, people who retire, a lot of times they may volunteer or or they may take college courses or do something because they gotta feel like they're being of use. And that's in, and so that's how God made the body and that's how, that's in a society here that uh, is under the curse of sin with all its problems. And still, you know, I got people I work with who could retire uh, they're at that age, but yet they continue to work because they want to feel like they're of use, and you know that's fine. So it shows that even in a sin cursed world, we don't want to just sit around and do nothing. When you do that, you get bored. Uh, so God made Adam. He says, uh, "You're going to be in charge of this garden. You're going to be, you know, taking care of the trees and the plants and everything." He had them working. But there was no sweat of his brow, there was no thorn and thistles. Uh, it was, you know, enjoyable work. There were no problems until, of course, he was under the curse of sin. And so, um, that's what God has planned for you in heaven, is to work for him for all eternity. And today you think, oh, work, that's a bad, that's a four-letter word. Don't use that word around me. I hate work. You know, I'd much rather sleep in. I don't like that stupid alarm clock. Uh, waking me up. I don't like the boss telling me what to do. I don't like the customers. I don't like the people I work with. It's just a miserable experience. Well, <laughs> when the curse of sin is gone, you don't have any of that. You're going to enjoy Christ living in you. There's not going to be any problems. You're going to enjoy it because now, you know, you think you want to be at a job where you're productive. Well, you're going to be a million times more productive in heaven than you would be on earth because you don't have all the problems associated with sin. And so it'll, it'll be a wonderful thing and you'll enjoy it. But do you say, well then, why is it that Satan allowed Adam and Eve to be tempted into sin? It seemed like the sin is what messed everything up. Well, again, it has to do with love because uh, God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, Jesus said in a parable, he says, here's this woman who, uh, well, it wasn't a parable, it was a real story, where this woman takes the perfume box, anoints the feet of uh, Jesus, washes it with her hair. 
she loves him so much because he forgave her so much. She was a prostitute. She was uh, in heinous sin and was headed for hell. And uh, Jesus forgave her of all those sins. And now she's going to have eternal life in the kingdom. And so because God has been so good to her, she wants to do everything she can to pay him back. So she takes uh, this very, very expensive thing of perfume. Judas Iscariot says it's a waste. You know, just throwing it on the ground, basically, throwing it at his feet. But yet, Jesus says he's, she's doing it for a memorial for me. It's going to be talked about for, you know, for all eternity, about what she just did. This is a good work. It's a good spiritual work because she's bringing honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so it didn't matter that it was cost so much money, that it, you know, take her a long time to work and pay for, the, pay for something like that again. Because what's important is she's bringing glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, thanking Him for His love that He shed upon her. And in eternity, we'll get to do that all the time. There won't be any limited resources. We won't say, oh, I wish I could share God's love, but I'm busy doing this or that. I got to take care of my family. I got to do that. It's everything you do. You're going to be sharing God's love. And you're not going to have a government taking taxes from you and taking your money so you can't do what you want to do with it. You're going to be having no sin, uh, unlimited resources, and uh, Christ living in you. So no ulterior motives and simply bringing glory to the Father. Jesus says to the Father in John 12, glorify thy name with a, and glorify me with the glory which I had before thee, before, with thee before the world. God says, I, God the Father says, I have glorified thy name, my name and I will glorify it again. And that's how it is in eternity. God has glorified his name through God's Christ's love coming through you to others in heaven for all eternity and he will keep glorifying it. In the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2 says. And so every age is going to be a new level, a greater glory that God gets and we get to participate in that and sharing his love. But if God did not allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve, none of that would ever take place. <laughs> Jesus says, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. But Jesus Christ died for us when we were enemies. So if the best love I can have is dying for a friend, and Jesus Christ died for enemies, well, it shows how great God's love really is. And what a wonderful thing that we get to be a small part of that for all eternity. But if God didn't allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve, they would never, they would not know God's love. They'd be in a state of innocence. They wouldn't be under the curse of sin. But they had to, they have to make the free will choice to accept God's love. Because of love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, is not rude, not self-seeking, not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, doesn't delight in evil, rejoices in the truth, always, you know, all those things, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Those things are of, of God, of God's love, and God would endure with us. He would do all these things and it would just be, we wouldn't be bringing glory to God if all we did was, I mean, it was still, it was a good creation. He looked, God looked at his creation and said it was very good, but it was good because, it was very good because it uh, would produce love. In Ecclesiastes 3, it talks about there's a time for every purpose under heaven, time to be born, time to die, all those things. And it says at the end of that chapter, it says that, um, now, only God knows that man can't see what God makes in the end from the beginning. And it says that God makes all things beautiful in his time. So God had a very good creation. He says that at the end of Genesis chapter 1. But it's not a beautiful creation. It's very good in the fact that it's like, it's a pattern of heavenly things. 
so that we could see God's goodness in the creation. And so then when we sin, then uh, we could turn to God because Romans 1 says, well, we everybody knows about his eternal power and Godhead. And so then we can turn to God um, once we recognize our sin, and for us today, it's trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for our sin. And then God gives us the gift of eternal life. That eternal life is Christ living in us. Us living by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And we had to make a free will choice for that to happen. Like I said, the dishwasher does good at the task it's provided, but there is no love coming through it. So no one praises the dishwasher or no one, you know, it's just, it's just a machine is all it is. And if we didn't have free will, then we would just be a machine. And so God allows Satan to tempt us. God gave Satan free will and Lucifer free will. He uses his free will to rebel against God. God wasn't happy about that. Um, God wants everybody to be saved, including Satan and all those uh, devils. Now, of course, they've made their choice. They can't be saved. No Redeemer has died for them like Jesus Christ died for us. But God, uh, God wanted them to choose to serve him. But they didn't choose to serve him. Uh, they chose to go their own way. And so, uh, which, you know, Satan and his forces did that. And so, you know, that's fine. But God then works all things together for good. Genesis, in the end of Genesis, Joseph says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And so God gets the good, gets the glory out of us uh, in spite of the fact that we sin. So if God didn't allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve to sin, then they wouldn't have the great love for God. They wouldn't really have a free will. They'd just be like a, a machine, really. And so then, um, you know, there wouldn't be any sin or anything. It would still be a very good creation because everything God makes is good. And, and so there wouldn't be anything wrong with it. But it wouldn't be beautiful. It, it took the process of time uh, to make it beautiful. You think of a, um, a woman who, when she is um, young, let's say she marries a man, and people will say she's beautiful, and on the outward she probably is, but uh, on the inward she doesn't really have that maturity yet. Uh, and so it's over time. You, you, when a couple has been married for, say, 50 years, uh, the woman, physically speaking, doesn't look beautiful as beautiful as she did when she was, say, 25 years old. Because, and you know, same thing with a man. It's just you're under the curse of sin. Your body decays. Um, you know, those things happen. But yet, usually, that love between the husband and the wife is greater, much greater. And it grows as time goes on throughout, you know, throughout that lifetime. And so the husband looks at the wife and says, she's more beautiful now than when the day I met her. Physically speaking, the world looks at her and says, well, no, look at that. She's got all those wrinkles. She's got these, you know, gray hair. She's got all these problems. But he's looking on the inward. He's looking at the inward beauty and says, she's more beautiful now. Uh, because over the process of time and going through trials, it's resulted in a beautiful woman. And that's how God is with us, is that uh, over the process of time, when we believe the gospel and we get sound doctrine in the inner man, what God is doing is he's making us more beautiful, conforming us more uh, to his image. You know, Paul talks about in Philippians 3, that I may know him and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. The more I'm made conformable unto his death, the more glory I bring to the Lord. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for itself a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. Uh, God got great, the greatest glory he ever got from Jesus Christ was when he died on a cross. And so he had to go through that process of the suffering to bring about the glory. And you wouldn't have the suffering if you didn't have the free will decision. 
to choose to allow God to work in you. Philippians 1.6 says that Jesus Christ has begun a good work in you and he will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ. He still has that process that he's working in us. And if God didn't allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve, they would have stayed in a state of innocence. And uh, if they, provided they chose not to rebel, which I think they would have anyway, because Satan chose to rebel, um, there was nobody tempting him. So Adam and Eve would have chosen to rebel as well. Would have taken them longer, but they would have they would have rebelled anyway. And um, and so God allowed that though, because if He just made them as robots and they're just in His creation. Well, they're in a state of innocence, and he's got a very good creation, but it's not beautiful. It's going to take the process of time of going through trials and tribulations. Uh, that's what you know makes a marriage work. The problem today is that people uh, aren't patient enough. They don't stay together for all those years. If you just get married and you just have that euphoria of having a, a new bride or a new husband, and then you don't go through it and when problems come you decide you're not going to work them out you're not going to overcome them um, you're probably going to get a divorce within three years and it won't be um, you know you won't get to see what God can do be with the love between a man and a woman as they go through these problems and situations well God is going to do that so much greater in heavenly places because you don't have the curse of sin you, you know, today, couples make it for 50, 60 years in spite of the fact of all the issues they've had. And um, and yet, you know, they uh, that, that's under the curse of sin. So just think when the curse of sin is lifted, uh, how much better it will be. And God working His love through us and bringing glory to us. You think your wife is more beautiful after 50 years of marriage than when you uh, when you married her, even though, physically speaking, she's had things happen because of the curse of sin. Just think in heavenly places when you don't have the curse of sin, and we're not talking about 50 years that God is going to be with us, but all eternity. And how, for us, God will just make us more and more beautiful to Him. We'll bring more and more glory to Him. We'll have more and more God's love coming through us. And ages to come, he might show forth his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And it's just going to be greater and greater as time goes on. Not, you know, world without end, nothing stopping it. And, um, and that process never would have happened if we're just robots. Because if we're just robots, we don't have a free will, then we don't have love. The dishwasher does the task, but there's no love there. There's no growth between me and the dishwasher. Um, it's just does the task. In fact, eventually it will stop doing the task and I got to get a new one. But when you've got love there, love grows. Love is a wonderful thing. It gets better over time. And you wouldn't have, God had to come in his love toward us and then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Adam would have been an innocence if Satan ever tempted him. But he never would have had God's love come through him. So God allowed the tempter because God had such a greater purpose for Adam and Eve and for us to share his love through us. That was his purpose. And so he allowed the tempter to come and tempt them so that they could make the free will choice so that they could later on then make the free will choice to accept God's love, to be saved, so that God's love could come through them. And, you know, love is so much greater than a robot. Thanks for watching.